All right, welcome. This is The Thinking Tree, a podcast to help believers renew their minds and reform their hearts. I'm Adam Sanchez. And I'm Jeff No. And today we are discussing parenting in the early years and some reflections on that foundational season of parenting. All right, we are back with another special guest. Mm-hmm. The lovely Tanya No joining us again. It has been awesome having you on oh. all these parenting episodes, especially. We're going to have to find other reasons to invite you back <laughs> on other episodes. Okay, yes. It's so please. much more fun. Okay. Yeah. And no offense, Jeff, but Tanya's smiling face, it's just more enjoyable. <laughs> I I get to see you every Sunday <laughs> preaching and all that, but it's great to have Tanya. I can't around. argue with that. You can't argue. I, I like being here too. It's fun. Now, we, we're going to close out the parenting series tonight. Uh, and, and what we wanted to emphasize this evening is that commitment to learning that all parents should have, not just the kids learning, but parents learning as well. Yep. And in those early years, it's also pivotal. It's not just learning when you're all done parenting, but learning while we're going. We recognize no parent is perfect, and no matter how hard a parent tries, all parents would do well to seek to learn and to grow and particularly in the early years. So that's what we want to emphasize tonight. Mm-hmm. So questions tonight are going to be focused on asking you guys how you learned and how you grew when your kids were really little. And that's how we're going to wrap up the the time of the early years and a little uh, little forward looking to, to our, our audience. God willing, later on, maybe next season, we will take on parenting in a different season of life. Mm. Maybe parenting in the school years. Mm-hmm. And then maybe we'll have to talk about parenting in the teen years. Uh-oh. And yeah. then we might have to talk about parenting in the young adult years and when you're a grandparent, all the things. <laughs> God willing, we'll take on each of those and, and we'll have you guys here along the way uh, to walk through that. But right now, we're going to wrap up those early years. So let's start with this question. Can you share a moment when you either realized you got something wrong as a parent or that you recognize you need to change your perspective? Wait, weren't we perfect? <laughs> Yeah, you were, honey. <laughs> but he's looking at me and I definitely was not. Um, and this is a hard a hard one because when I was thinking about it, I was like, wow, there's so many times when I realized, mm. wow, I've got this wrong. You know, we're all sinners and we come into parenting with our baggage and our, our wrong perceptions of things. And so we make a lot of mistakes. And um, one of the ones that's probably the most significant for me was I remember um, poignantly that there was a time where um, I just was not reacting well to my children's sin. Um, I would get the worst pit in my stomach when I would see my kid disobey or be rude or unkind. Or when a nursery worker would say, do you know what your kid did today? Or when the teacher would say, I had to pull, you know, getting called in to see the parent, you know, parent teacher conference. Uh I, yeah, those were some bad times. And I had the worst feeling in my stomach. It was just awful. My kid blew it. My kid sinned. My kid was awful. My kid, whatever. Um, And I was mortified. um, And I, obviously went home and dealt with the sin with my child, but I had to really take a hard look at my heart and where was my, that feeling coming from for me. Um, And truly I wasn't being grieved over their sin. I was more upset how that reflected on Mm. me. I felt like their sin pointed out a failure on my part. And I felt responsible for that. And I felt like it was an extension of me. And I I would never do that. I would never be unkind like that. And so when they did that, it 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 burdened me for the wrong reasons. Mm. Um, and I, I realized, I didn't realize then, but I look back on it now and I was just really struggling with moralism. I wanted my yeah. kids to do the right thing. And of course we all want our kids to do the right thing, but when they don't do the right thing, which is gonna be frequently, um, how do we respond to that? And are we responding to it in a godly way with a heavenly mindset and a Christ-like mindset? Or are we just going, oh, I'm embarrassed of how this looks to me. So it was a very, um, it was a big failure for my in my life. And I would say, I still struggle with it. Um, it wraps pride, it, it wraps 
people pleasing, it wraps um, moralism, it wraps so many things up, and nothing's quite as sanctifying as your kids. Mm. And you know what they're putting on display is what you've put into them somewhat, but it's yeah. also their sin nature. Um, and so we are. I had to come to that place of understanding and believing that I'm ultimately not responsible for the long term result of what my teaching and parenting goes into my kid and what they regurgitate out. Um, they stand before the Lord responsible for that. But as a parent, it when especially when they're little, you are just clinging to everything that they do and say. And so it just really, really was a hard lesson for me. And I would say I never got fully over that. I don't would say I've never fully gotten victory over that. I have adult children and I still want to go, Ugh, oh, that's not what I would do. Uh, <laughs> do you want my input, honey? You know, no, <laughs> you don't. Uh, you know, it's just really hard sometimes to see our kids do things differently than we do, have different yeah. convictions, act differently, live their lives. Of course, we want them to love the Lord and, and be Christians and that's first and foremost. But beyond that, there's just a whole lot of differences that our kids are gonna exemplify and it's tough. Yeah. You know, um, before you go, Jeff, I'm really glad that you brought that up because I think this is something we're going to keep interacting with as we talk about parenting at each stage. Mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned, it wasn't something that just went away. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't just go away after they reached a certain age mm -hmm. or a certain level of mm -hmm. responsiveness. Right. But there's that battle of seeing your reflection mm -hmm. in your children mm -hmm. and how how do we deal with just wanting them to perform, right? The moralism versus encouraging gracious responses, growing in the right. Lord. And that battle, I think every single parent faces that. It, depending on the the level that they do, that's going to be a personal thing. But I don't think that there's one parent who doesn't struggle with that. And I think if they try to say that they don't struggle with that, they're probably not telling the truth mm -hmm. because all of us see our little mini me's right. in our kids. And when they do well, we take on all the encouragement. Yep. And when yep. they don't do well, all the discouragement of what mm -hmm. did I do? How did mm -hmm. I fail? This reflects on mm -hmm. me. And setting the course is important in those early years but maintaining, it's not just, mm -hmm. okay, we conquer it and it's over. Right. Right. It's being vigilant mm -hmm. every every step of the way. And I'm, I'm really glad that you mentioned, even though it's still a struggle, you're fighting mm -hmm. to love them well and to encourage them well. Mm -hmm. And that's an encouragement, I think, that every parent listening to this can take away. It's not necessarily that we conquer every single besetting sin that we have or right. uh, even in, insufficiency in, mm -hmm. in our Christian walk, but it's that we're striving to be faithful. And if we recognize a weakness, dealing with that weakness regularly, man, that's the best thing right. that we can do right. in a way that pleases and honors the Lord. So I'm really glad that you brought that one up because I do think that every parent deals with that at some to some degree. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Just a quick caveat. Our kids were not awful. So, because <laughs> um, I know they'll listen to this and they'll go, wait, what? They were not off. They were not selling drugs on the street corner no, at age no. three. Yeah. Um, but no, they had their moments, you know, in the market where they might embarrass you mm -hmm. or say something to another adult or unkind to another child or something like that. And, and those or are those moments. Disrespect grandma. Disrespect, yeah, oh! exactly. Yeah. That one hurts, yeah. <laughs> those things are going to happen for sure. But listen, it, it's a good thing. I, I want to say this. It's a good thing to teach your kids to be respectful. It's mm -hmm. a good thing to teach them um, you know, to honor the Lord in the way they 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 deal with other kids and things of that nature. What Tanny's talking about, yeah, it comes back to the heart issue for the parent, which is the issue. So we so we want to we want to train, absolutely yeah. want to train, but we want to train with the right goal in mind, and that's to honor the Lord and to shepherd their heart through those issues. Right. right. Okay. Good. Uh, but just that that caveat. Our kids were great. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Okay, um, I would say in terms of uh, yeah, learning learning as a parent, it, it's an ongoing process. It, it never stops. And for me, the mis biggest mistake I made actually has more to do with our marriage, hmm. um, because my, my so I so I was learning how to be a husband, and then we got pregnant, and then I had to go through another learning process yeah. of how to be a dad and how to be yeah. a good husband while being a dad. And that's a process as well. So I think early on, the biggest mistake I made was thinking more in so in such traditional roles that my job was to be spiritual leader, provider, protector. That's it. And so um, I don't think I was I, I don't I don't think I was as active in, in parenting early on, and I mm -hmm. had to grow into that role. 
And I put too much weight on Tanya doing that while I was out there, you know, fighting the battles in the corporate right, world, right. right? Long hours, et cetera. So it wasn't as practically helpful as I could have been. And I had to grow and I had to change that. And, and the, big, the big thing that helped me in that process was our small group at church. Mm. As I'm talking to other dads and I'm hearing mm -hmm. mentors talk about mm -hmm. what it means to be a father and a husband. Mm -hmm. So those church relationships were, were really the vehicle that helped me to grow in that and then good communication with my wife. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, I'm really glad that you mentioned the the life on life part mm -hmm. with others. And I yeah. know over the years you mentioned, you guys have mentioned that group a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That it was very helpful, sanctifying, mm -hmm. beneficial. And that's the blessing of growing up with other believers, whether they're in the same demographic or close enough, right. uh, is having that life on life opportunity where you're talking about the struggles, mm -hmm. talking about, oh, wow, you know, my child, you know, did this incredibly disobedient thing. And you have the other dad or mom saying, yeah, mine did that too, exactly. you know, last mm -hmm. week or two weeks ago. How did you deal with it? Well, here's what we did. How did you deal with it? And now they're sharing mm -hmm. how they tried to put faith to work and maybe they failed miserably, but they learned from it. Or mm -hmm. maybe they did a good job, but the right. kid responded terribly. Right. Either right. way, that interaction can be a great blessing. And the yep. more that those happen, yeah. uh, that gives more of an opportunity to both live life on life and, and the blessing of practicing one another's, but then also to pursue holiness and faithfulness better. We're better right. together when we share right. the experiences that we're growing from and learning from. So I'm, I love that you guys mm -hmm. always mention that. There's a blessing in our local church, particular, particularly uh, with the age demographic of mm -hmm. many of our parents having yeah. kids in similar age ranges, school ages, um, well, I guess mostly not school ages. They're pre-school ages. Preschool, right. Uh, but there's a lot uh, of families that are in the same boat. Mm -hmm. There's so much commonality right. that's faced. Right. Um, man, we're really blessed. But with that commonality, there's the double-edged sword of everyone thinks that they're right. And hence, the reason for us doing this podcast, try to be a blessing, Correct. is we want to provide a perspective and some conversation points that would help to remind all of us, there's a reason why I'm not answering all these questions, <laughs> to help to remind all of us that we are a work in progress. Yeah. Right. We're growing and there's so much to learn and sometimes really helpful to take a step back. And I want the listeners to hear this, to take a step back and to consider the life and the testimony of those who have walked before you and mm. to be blessed by that. So with that being said, let mm. me ask the next question, okay. which is, I think, a very important one. Looking back at those early years uh, when your children are very young uh, and you think about like that parent group that you guys were a part of, the small group, do you think that parents in those early years when their kids are really young, do you think they balance that dynamic of loving and prioritizing their marriage as much as they ought to? That's a really good question. Um, <clears throat> and I want to say a blanket answer of no. But I know that there are, that's a blanket answer. And so there are exceptions and there are some families that are probably doing a great job with this. Um, but as a whole, I think we don't um, prioritize our marriage strongly enough. Um, kids are overwhelming. They exhaust yeah. you. They are very demanding, mm -hmm. much more demanding than you realize. And they're so cute and innocent looking when they're making those demands that you just, looking. you know, it just yeah. your heart. You know, and there's just something to it, literally a biological, physical change that takes place in a mom's heart once she has a child. Right. It's just phenomenal the way God does that. Um, and for me personally, um, this was hard because I had the right mindset, but in practicality, it was a little bit hard. And I'm going to use a weird analogy, but um, I came from the workforce. I was a working person when I met Jeff, um, so, you know, financially independent, all of that. Um, and I had very high, what I believe to be a high work ethic. Um, I just really valued jobs and making money and being successful. So when I got married, I kind of viewed that as a job. Mm. I was being tasked with this responsibility. I wanted to do well. I didn't want to just do well. I wanted to do the very best that I could do. I would take continuing education courses if they were offered. I would, um, you know, want periodic performance reviews to make sure I was doing it right, you know? <laughs> and I was willing to do all of that for nothing, actually. Um, but I just really wanted to succeed in my marriage. I wanted to work really, really mm -hmm. hard at it. And we did. Um, and it, was, it wasn't it was always easy, but we, we worked on it and I felt like we had a good marriage. <clears throat> then kids come along. I saw that as a job. 
I have this responsibility. I mean, I was taught that over and over and over again. This is your responsibility. God's entrusting you with this child and he, it's perfect for you. That was God's voice. And you yeah. have to <laughs> take care of this child. You know, so I was like, oh, I've got another job here. All right, so I'm gonna take classes and I'm gonna talk to other moms and I'm going to do my very best to make sure I get balanced meals and I'm gonna you know, make sure I breastfeed and all these things. I'm the job, 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 job. And what I tended to forget was that I didn't have a new job. I had responsibilities that were added mm. to my existing job, which was to be a wife. That was the job that I steined up and said, I do too. Mm -hmm. And then God said, in that place, I'm going to task you with this. And you guys can do this together. And I believe that you can do it. And I'm going to give you tools and I'm going to give you other things. But my original job is still the foundation of where I'm employed, so to speak, and where everything comes from. Yeah. So it's it's very challenging. It's very, very hard um, to keep that balance where the marriage is the first priority because parenting sucks the life out of you mm. and the children are demanding and your husband isn't as demanding. So to be able to say, honey, you cook your own meal tonight. <laughs> I can't get to it. He can do that where the kids can't if you don't pull that off. Yeah. So it, it it's very hard to keep that perspective in your head when you feel like this is the pull that needs me and this is the one that doesn't need me. We have that backwards. And that is really where the enemy, I think, can get a foothold very easily. It starts in our minds, in our mindset towards those things. Um, and we really have to work hard to reverse that. And if you as a mom are listening to this and you're not sure if your priorities are right um, or if you're prioritizing your marriage correctly, ask your spouse. Mm. They know. They can tell you. And, and hopefully he says, honey, nope. We haven't been doing a great job with that. Let's have grace and patience with one another, but let's set some goals to try to get back to that place where we not only do prioritize mentally, but we physically show that priority to our children. Yeah. Um, we talked about this in a previous episode of, of having date nights and having mm -hmm. your kids know why you are taking that date night and how you're going. You are modeling that for your children. So it starts in our minds and our mindset. Um, but I think as a whole, we haven't, we haven't done a good job of keeping those priorities where they should be. Yeah. Yeah, I love that you mentioned encouraging the the wife, typically the one who's staying at home with the kids, uh, to ask their husband first. Now, the encouragement for the wife in this is to be humble, to seek mm -hmm. to seek that that information, right? The observation from your spouse, uh, because you don't want to have you don't want to be waiting for them to tell you. You don't want you don't want to be waiting for the husband to just say, "Wife, this isn't going well." Right. It would be better to start with, "Hey, let me let me ask and inquire." And then husbands, the the challenge for you is to be gentle. Mm -hmm. The challenge for the husband is to remember your your wife, especially if she her full-time job as you mentioned it is to be a wife and to be a mother and to take care of these very needy, demanding, young little people uh, that are that are so dynamic and fun at one moment and so frustrating and difficult mm -hmm. the next moment. Mm -hmm. So husbands, be very gentle and be patient with your wife and be be a helper to mm -hmm. your wife to pursue a better dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Because chances are it's not the wife's fault any more than it's the husband's fault. Mm -hmm. It's a mutual difficulty of balancing the work, the life, the the church involvement, the activities, all the things, but all of it in a way to glorify God. So I love that you're encouraging, whether it's the mom and, and dads, think about this too, going to your spouse and saying, are we balancing things well? And if not, can we work towards something better? That's the posture that right. every believer really should have in humility. Right. Right. And yeah, humility is key. Even going back to what you were talking about before, as far as working with, talking with other parents, if if we don't have the attitude of humility, we can't receive admonishment, encouragement, ideas, change of, you know, a, of a different opinion. We can't accept any of that if we are, I got it all together, you know, yeah. and we all know behind the scenes, we don't have it all yeah. together. But when we put that out there, we're off-putting to the people who are trying to help us and encourage us. And it's the same thing with this is if your spouse says, I don't feel like our marriage is a priority in your heart, you have to be humble enough to say, okay, I apologize for that. And what can we do to improve upon that? Um, and it feels like, <clears throat> a little bit like a failure for a wife to be able to say, I can't, I can't do all this. Um, early on when our kids were little, I asked Jeff, can we get a cleaning person? Mm -hmm. that, 
it, it, it feels like a failure that I can't get that, but that's just something that weighs on me that I think if I took that off of my plate, it would really make a huge difference mm-hmm. for me. And it did. I mean, that was eight to 10 hours in a week that he gifted me by doing that. And so for most of my married life, I've worked and I've always thought I would much rather work eight hours somewhere else and pay somebody to clean my house <laughs> than do, spend that time in my home cleaning. It's just not something I enjoyed and it didn't you know, establish my worth or value as a wife or a mom, but it was just something that I couldn't keep up with everything. Um, and I've, I've even had friends who have said to their parents, look at, you want to help us? You always offer to do things paying somebody to come clean my house once a month would be really a blessing to me. Mm. And there are parents that are willing to help with that type of stuff or saying, hey, mom, can you take the kids overnight once a month or once Mm. a week or whatever just to give it? I mean, it's okay to ask for those helps. People want to give that to you. And it doesn't mean that you're a failure or that you're less of anything. Um, Accept that and be willing to ask for that and be practical in that. Yeah, asking for it's help good. is really, really, really important. Listen, very few young young parents have this nailed down. So mm-hmm. it's a learning process. It's mm-hmm. something we grow in. And there is truth to the stereotypes. Look, we're, we're idle factories, our hearts. Yeah. And men can idolize their, their jobs or mm-hmm. careers and women can idolize their children. Mm-hmm. And so we just have to be aware of that. But going back to Genesis 2, remembering that 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 when Adam was incomplete, God gave him a woman, not yeah. a woman and children. Right, right. Right? So that was the original- <laughs> That'll preach. That was the original <laughs> relationship. That one fleshness was the core. Yeah. And, and Cain and Abel were a blessing in addition to it, but mm-hmm. it didn't change the one fleshness. So that's got to be the priority. And communication, you guys just mentioned it, huge to be able to sit down without the kids crawling on you and just have that face-to-face and say, how are we doing? How can I, how can I do it better? How can I help you more? having those open lines of communication, being honest with each other, that's huge. Mm-hmm. Those things are really, really important. And I love the idea of, yeah, you've got to find wise, ways to get away, mm-hmm. to get sitters, yeah. <clears throat> to have parents come in, ask other young couples to share yeah. babysitting, take an overnight. I see too many moms that say, I'm not ready to go, go away and leave my child. But you got to find, you got to find trusted people that you can leave them overnight to get away with your husband. Yes. Right? Let me jump on that thought. You might have more to share, but let me jump on that okay. one real quick because that there, there's, there's the dynamic of maybe we don't know who could do it, which you guys are mentioning, mm-hmm. hey, ask, you know, ask a grandparent, ask yeah. a trusted uh, friend, you know, that could do that. But then there's also the danger that parents can have, if you just mentioned it, of, well, I just don't trust anyone. Right. And mm. that also reveals potential idolatry. Correct. Uh, because, and this is something I have to deal with, like when I travel, for example, if I'm 10,000 miles away, is God less sovereign over my family when I'm further away than when I'm here? Mm. And it pains my heart almost to the point of tears at times when I'm far away and something hard is going on. And yet I have to remember, but God is sovereign. Yeah. And in the same way, and I'm not comparing myself to a mother here, just to be really clear, <laughs> but in the same way, if if a mother's struggling with letting their child go for one evening, or you know, and now maybe it's not an overnight, maybe it's just the one evening, that is a great opportunity to say, ooh, there's a red flag here. Yeah, mm-hmm. I sure. need to check in this check engine light. Something's going on where I'm valuing every single second so much that I can't pursue what you just talked about, Jeff, the one flesh, yeah. the marriage relationship that was instituted before children. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's, I would just caution any parent out there just to be mindful in these early years, especially to check your heart if you're valuing your child so much that you might be overlooking that first love, which mm-hmm. is supposed to be your spouse. Correct. And I'm not speaking of first love and the context right. of revelation. I, okay, yes, we can get to that another time. <laughs> uh, but the emphasis of the marriage relationship, and and I love what you guys shared. Was there anything else you wanted to share on no, that? No, I that was great. On that That's one. fantastic. I wanted to ask you guys this: What habits or principles would you encourage young parents specifically to pursue that could be difficult? Things that you're like, ah, this was painful to do, but I know I needed to do it. Well, <clears throat> we've talked about some of these in the past, um, uh, specifically daily time with Jesus. Boy, that's hard when the parents, when the babies mm. are little, yeah. it's really, really hard. Um, but that has to be such a high priority that it's a non-negotiable. It has to happen at some point 
some way. It doesn't always have to look exactly the same, but it has to be there. Um, and date nights, we talked about that before. Um, but one thing that I we haven't mentioned before that I thought I'm going to throw this out there is that I think um, it would be very beneficial to a young set of fa- a set of parents um, to uh, go to summer camp. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Let's let's hear this one. I, I I don't know about you, but I was blessed to grow grow up going to summer camps. Mm. Uh, my church, we always go to these summer camps. And I had some of the greatest memories and experiences in summer camps. And they were almost always a real spiritual high for me. Um, and I look back on it now and I think, okay, why was that? Why was, you know, the mountaintop experience that I had, why was that? It was predominantly because I was away from my normal routine, got to go to a fun place. I was surrounded myself with my friends. I was with them. But we got to study the word, listen to a speaker, dig in, do small groups, pray, time to confess. All of that was kind of compacted into this week of summer camp. And it was just really life-changing. Um, and I always walked away um, feeling, you know, convicted, feeling renewed, feeling, you know, like new determination that this was going to be better. I was going to change that. And so it was really just a good concentrated time in my life spiritually every year. And I did it, I don't know how many summers. Um, So I think that when you are a parent, especially of littles, it's it, like I said before, it sucks the life out of you. Mm-hmm. And very little thought is given to your own self soul care. You don't, ha- you barely have time to do anything. Um, and so the idea of going to summer camp with your spouse is something that came to me today. I thought, how cool would it be if once a year you took a full day or maybe a weekend away? And just went away from the kids by yourselves with the intent purpose of working on your marriage and Mm. working on your parenting and dealing with it with the Lord, going and having a time of prayer together and study the God's word. Maybe you bring a book that's talking about spiritual truths that, and do a personal inventory. Where are you? What sins are you really still battling? How are you doing with prioritizing? You know, does your spouse see that you're being faithful? Are you? Um, you, you need admonishment. Do you need encouragement in a certain way? What things can change? Goal setting, all of those things. I think it would be phenomenal to be able to come back from that and say, okay, all right, you know, we've got our batteries recharged, mm. but it, it's intentional. It's like, it's, you know, you've got to set that time aside and look for it. And most of us would think, oh, well, we're going to vacation. We're going to go to Disneyland with the kids or whatever. Yeah. Instead of saying, hey, we're going to take some time just for us and look yep. at it like summer camp and, and it should be or just fun. A and retreat. Something you, a yeah, retreat. like a retreat. Yeah. yeah. A very um, purposeful. Yes, yeah. with very yeah. purposeful intent about looking at um, the things that you need to improve get a, upon. Get a in cabin marriage. in Big Bear and just get away the yeah. two of you. Yeah. 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 But and you, take an overnight. Yeah, ask but, your yeah, grand, yeah. ask the grands. Right. To yeah, watch but it's the not kids. just you know go to the movies and hang I love out. That. You hey, know, when are we? When are we about, doing that? Let's go do yeah, that. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we've never gone to summer camp together. That would be so fun. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm making it happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that's that. great. Listen, I would obviously, in terms of doing hard things with littles, go back to the discipline podcast we did a few weeks mm. ago. That is essential. Uh, biblical discipline is huge, but. The other thing that I would say, because I know we're running out of time here, is um, this is going to sound really simple. Getting to church, staying involved in body life yeah. is hard when you have littles. Mm-hmm. But listen, I'm, I'm going to say something difficult here, and I'm probably going to make some people angry. <laughs> I've seen many times uh, young parents use their kids as excuses, excuses not to be involved in body life, right? I'm, I'm not going to come to member meeting. Uh, can't make it on Sunday morning, can't be a part of a small group. Basically, we just check out for three years because it's hard. Mm-hmm. And, and there's nothing in the Bible that says you have a responsibility to pursue God, to worship him with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. But when you have, Except, kids, yeah. when you have kids, then you get a pass. Um, you won't find that anywhere in the Bible. So Instead, would, you hear instruct your children in the way they should yes. go and raise them up yes. in the way they should go and write these things yes. on the doorposts and instruct them as you get. And yeah. you're, setting, you're setting a pattern. Right. And, and, and it's easy to fall into lazy patterns mm-hmm. and you're setting a pattern for your kids. And then at some point, you're just going to one day wake up and the alarm's going to go off and you need to go back to your life of worshiping God. 
It doesn't usually happen doesn't work that, that way. way. And, and kids notice things very early on. So I know it's hard, but you got to find ways to find that, that biblical balance to say, I'm not going to allow this addition to my marriage, which is a beautiful addition. We love it. It's from the Lord. I'm not going to allow that to get in the way of my worship. Amen. I love that you guys are, are emphasizing kind of two two sides of the same coin. You know, Jeff, you're talking about the regular norm of being committed to life in the local church. And yep. our church is firmly committed to that. Uh, every elder with that firm conviction, every deacon with a firm conviction. We pray every member with the same firm conviction uh, that we would be people who live life together in the norm. And then Tanya, kind of the, the other side of that coin, which is also so important, that we're not just resting, you know, to get away from work. We are resting so that we can do all of the work or really mm-hmm. what God has for us this side mm-hmm. of glory, ultimately to his glory. Mm-hmm. That if we're not intentional with that time, mm-hmm. then doing the Disneylands, doing all those things, they're also very exhausting for mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Parents know that. Or if they haven't learned it, they will learn that. Vacations are exhausting with kids. Um, but also it doesn't prepare our heart right. so that we can come back and be ready right. for what God has for us. Right. Whether that's a new school year, whether that's the middle of the school year, um, that's something that, so my wife has fought for that. I know I'm not supposed to be sharing on this, this is you guys, but my wife has fought for us to do those retreats yeah, regularly. That's good. And to my shame, I don't always take the opportunity, but she's persistent and I'm so grateful that she is because when we do those, oh my goodness, coming back, now we're more unified. Right. We're ready right. to take on whatever season God has for us. Mm-hmm. It, it changes everything by having that intentionality of talking about the hard things, working through them, and trying to get on the same page. That is not time that is poorly spent. That is time right. that is worth right. its weight in gold. Right, right. Amen. Yeah, and going back to the humility thing that we touched on before, if you really want to be brave and you really want to do something hard, before you go to summer camp, approach an older couple and say, what do you see we need to work on? Mm, but mm. now you have to be in a relationship yep. with people. Yes, that's true. Mm. So yep. that yep. they can speak yep. helpfully, yep. which means you got to be involved on Sunday morning. Body life. Yep. And in body life so that people actually know you yep. and they can speak into your yep. life. So yep. those all feed into each other. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yep. yep. That's good. Okay. Well, as we wrap up here, uh, and I know this one's a little longer, but it's a ben- it's a benefit and a blessing because it's the end of the series. One to give you guys the opportunity to share any final thoughts about parenting in the early years. And so remember, we're really focusing in right before the kids get to school. So these are those toddler years and the preschool years, or you know, preschool without school. Uh, but those years before they get to the school age, what are any final thoughts you guys want to share with parents? <clears throat> Actually, I had this fun thought this past week, and I'm so excited that you asked this question because I thought this is the perfect time to share that. Um, but first, I just wanted to remind all the parents that are listening that you are in this for the long game. Mm. This is not a sprint. Yeah, it's not a sprint till they get walk into kindergarten. <laughs> you know, it's not like <laughs> just got to get till that point. Um, you really, um, the Lord has entrusted you with a lifelong journey. And this and parenting is the long game. So you have to sometimes step back a little bit and think about the long game. And just like anything, if you were in a, a job, if you were in you know training for a sport, you have a goal that's set and you need to try to strategically figure out how do we get to that goal. And with parenting, it's so easy to get burdened and, and kind of swamped with the minutia of the day-to-day that the long game or the end goal can get lost in all of that. And so my thought was um, to kind of, um, as parents, this was, this was my idea, was if you were to sit down and talk together as a couple and say, what are 12 traits that we really want to instill in our children? whether that be fruits of the spirit or character traits or um, different things in their life like that. And if you were to say, okay, we're going to take one month out of every year. So let's say January is going to be on honesty. We want to teach truthfulness and honesty. So your kid is one, your kid is two, your kid is three. So you're talking about age appropriate things that you can deal with, but you can 
you think about it as a couple and say, okay, over the month of January, we are going to hit truthfulness hard. We're just, we're going to bring it up all the time. We're going to talk about it. We're going to watch shows about it. We're going to read books about it. We're going to talk about Bible characters who lied and what happened. We talk about what, how the Lord views lying. We can talk about all of those things. Why do we do that? And what comes from it? And how sin brings lies and how we multiply that. We can keep doing that. We can do it when they're one and two and three. It will look different than when they're five and six and seven, but we can do it during that time and teach them that way. And then the next year we come back to January and we're doing truthfulness again. Now they're a little bit older. So the, the lessons and the examples and stories are a little bit different, but we can add to that. And you think about that. If you did that, when your child goes off to college, you would have spent 18 full months mm. teaching your child how to be truthful and why that's important. So I think that sometimes with parenting, with kids, especially with littles, we parent on the fly. Mm. As the things come up, we think, oh, organically, I'm going to be able to teach my child about <laughs> truthfulness. When they lie, we'll have a lesson prepared. And it doesn't <laughs> happen that way. It's it like, and, and so if you are not intentional about your teaching, it's going to be gone. Your time is going to be gone. And you're going to be, oh my goodness, they're in school. And now for eight hours out of the day, the prime, somebody else is teaching them. I should have been teaching them. So we can do it. It modifies, it changes as they go along. But if we can be intentional about that character trait building on a calendar schedule, I think it would actually give parents some real direction mm. on things. Um, and boy, it, I think it would be cool to see the fruits of that over the years when kids go, oh, here we go. We're going to talk about this again, you know, but yeah, this is the month of that. And just have the kids know that that's coming and regular would be a really cool thing. I love that idea. That's awesome. Maybe we'll have to do something with it at the church level. Mm. We'll yeah. see. You got, you got my good. wheels spinning yeah. over here. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I was good. thinking about like we could connect acorns to it and we could connect home devotions to it. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of things we could do. Church, okay. Church Sounds like we got to start planning for next <laughs> know, year, huh? I know, exactly. No. <laughs> and you know what? It would be really cool if all the parents were doing it at the same time, the same traits at the same time. Mm. It would be. That would be yeah. very helpful. So the kids are even talking yep. about the same yep. thing. Yep. And, yep. Yeah. You're at the playground. You're, you know, both parents are talking about it. That would be kind of fun. Okay, well, let's not sprint with this idea yet, but okay. I think we have some <laughs> items to talk about for our, our planning for this upcoming year. Yeah, that's pretty so, big. Yeah, stay I tuned. No, I, I would just add real quick that, uh, look, um, life is seasons, Ecclesiastes, right? And you have little ones right now. And if you are sprinting just to get them to school, you're missing out on some of the joys. Mm. So don't, don't just constantly be pining away for the next season. Enjoy the blessings of this season. It changes. Sometimes it gets easier. Sometimes it gets harder. Mm -hmm. uh, but enjoy the season you're in and the blessing that those kids are and, and, and parent them biblically. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, I'm so grateful for you guys. I've been able to walk, you know, just, behind you kind of watching your footsteps for the last 15 ish years uh, since your kids were preteens and then In teens youth and then youth group all under of that, you. right? Yeah. Go, growing up through those yeah. ages. And it's a blessing to not only have seen those years and, and to watch how you guys parented during that time, but to see, I kind of came in to, to view that on the heels of many of those years of investment and those years that we're talking about mm. right now, those early years. Uh, and so for the listeners, just to to encourage you, I've seen the consistency with Jeff, with Tanya, with Dave, who's been sitting here as well, uh, talking about parenting, seen the consistency of life and testimony. And I, it's already been a blessing for me without the podcast. It's been a grace for me to sit here and to listen to you guys talk about things that you've learned it, you know, over time and the reflection time and now as grandparents mm. and be able to see. And so I pray listeners, as you're hearing these encouragements that you would you would do something with them, that you would take it and whether you wrestle with the idea or whether you affirm and say, I'm going to put this into practice, you do something with it, but don't just be passive. Don't just hear these things and say, oh, well, that was a great episode. Let me move on. Right. Do something with it. Mm. As a young parent, do something. The years will fly by. They will. Amen. And you won't be able to remember what happened in those early years. But if you are faithful each and every day, you have the opportunity, like Tanya just said, to look back 18 years later and say, by the grace of God, they are what they are. I am what I am. And God will do what mm -hmm. he wants to, right. but I've sought to be faithful. Right, right. Yep. That's the, that's the right. goal at the end of all of that. Yep. So I'm really grateful for you guys spending the time 
talking about these things, uh, sharing honestly about you know the ups and the downs mm-hmm. and everything in between. And I know there's so many more stories you guys could tell. So oh, yeah. you know, parents in our church, you know, like they've invited the questions. So you guys should go, you know, invite them out to dinner. Let them be your dinner date when you guys go. <laughs> hey, we'll take that. Exactly. Sure. You know, uh, you guys can share your your ideas for the for the family camp. Mm-hmm. You know, you can give them give them ideas, yep. give them a reflection. Uh, Well, great. So thankful for you guys joining us here. Uh, Listeners, we pray this conversation has helped you to renew your minds and reform your hearts. Lord willing, we'll see you next time on The Thinking Tree.